Um, Please will run down these stairs behind me. Alright. Hey everybody. Welcome to the PyCast, the Tom's Hardware PyCast for July 13th, 2021. We'll give it a, a few seconds for all of you who've been uh, waiting to filter in. Uh, as you can see, our this our very special guest for this episode is none other than Raspberry Pi founder Evan Upton, uh, who is going to be taking your questions live for the whole show. Uh, and uh, as always, we are joined by uh, Raspberry Pi expert Ash Hill and uh, Le and uh, Les Pounder. Yes, Ash. Uh, Ash's, if you've been watching the show, you know Ash's last name was not Hill last week, but it is now Hill. That's some that. that is some dedication. Yes. Now. Yes. Uh, and uh, Le and Les Pounder, our associate editor. So uh, it has been a big year already for um, for Raspberry Pi uh, because we've seen the Pico. Uh, the Pico and all the RP twenty forty boards come out this year. How do you how do you feel that it's going so far? Um, it's going incredibly well. Um, we uh, obviously we picked a, a kind of an unusual year to get into um, so being a semiconductor company. Obviously, some of you may have heard that there is a shortage of semiconductors, so that's kind of a good a good year and a bad year, I guess. Um, a good year because you know it's um, what's been really nice about RP twenty forty. Provided to other people who've really been struggling to run their businesses. Um, so obviously, you will have seen Pico, our first party board. Uh, you'll have seen the various partner boards from Pimroni, Adafruit, Spark from Spark from uh, Arduino. Um, but we've also been supplying it in small numbers to a number of other businesses who have really been struggling. Often, small businesses have really been struggling to get their hands on any kind of microcontroller. So, um, so it's kind of arrived at a good time in that respect. Obviously, the downside of that is that it's been a challenging year to try and ramp a product. It's been a challenging product to try to go to scale uh, with a simple product like Audi 2040. But uh, by and large, it's good, and we've been really happy with the kind of the way it's been received. I think people, people have enjoyed it. Um, I think it took people a little while. It was a wonderful thing in the first couple of days with people saying, "What?" <laughs> um, and then reading the data sheet, often saying, "What?" Uh, Cortex M0 Plus, um, and then reading the data sheet, and then understanding, starting to understand the design intent um, behind the device and what it was going to let them do. Yeah, I mean it's just growing and growing every day. We're getting new new products in that are RP twenty forty based. Mm. Uh, so far, this is my favorite. Have you seen Have you seen this? I was I have seen it now. I was completely unaware of it until a week or so ago. Um, yes. It's a lovely thing, isn't it? Yes. This is uh this is the for those not familiar. This is the uh at, this is the Adafruit RP uh, RP twenty forty macro pad, and it is a keypad that has RP twenty forty built in. Uh, but unlike some of the other keypads, it also has an encoder. It has a speaker. It has a 128 by 64 OLED display, and it has a STEMIQ STEMIQT connector. So uh, it's a little bit more jazzed up. My son and I have been using turned it into a musical instrument, so you can uh, you can like play piano on it by by hitting the keys. But uh, what it what is the uh, what is your favorite RP twenty forty board so far besides the Pico? Oh, I don't think I have one. I mean, we you know we love all our children. Um, <laughs> the, uh, what, uh, seriously though, I think what's what's been interesting about um, the way that our close in partners, the people who have um, pre release access to RP twenty forty have, have used it, is that they've all found differentiated things to do with the product. So they aren't all just making more expensive Pico. Obviously, you know, Pico's a very attractive price, but four dollars. Um, what people have found ways to do is to to differentiate in some way. So differentiate on size, um, differentiate on um, uh, integration into other ecosystems. Um, so into the feather ecosystem, uh, into the micromod um, system, the stemmer system. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, uh, the addition of Wi-Fi, right? So so, so at least until very 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 recently, the, um, the, the, uh, the Arduino board was the the, the, the Nano twenty forty um, was the um, was the only one with Wi-Fi. Um, so people have, it isn't the case that people are just making knockoffs of the Pico. Right? Obviously, I don't, I don't think that before. Um, and it's kind of, that, that was our instinct. When we brought people in, you know, we brought in four partners. Obviously, they're all companies we've worked with before. Um, uh, and we had this sort of feeling that all of them were going to manage to carve out interesting differentiating space with the company. 
we're still yeah. all, we're still all, in fairness we are still always in the ecosystem so it's possible that when Pico system appears then i will have a baby ah yes i have touched one now oh that's amazing yes the pico system for those unaware that is the Timaroni gaming gaming handheld gaming system and yes my son asked me about it on a weekly basis hey are you gonna is the pico system out yet have you checked so it's it's i mean it's it's, it's a lovely it's a lovely concept and we looked at doing something of this sort ourselves but it's something where you know we, we have to we have still have a very limited amount of engineering results at raspberry pi um you see the amount of stuff we do um we have to be quite you know when you're throwing resource at chip development project and chip development projects are not cheap in any respect in money or in resource um so so we've got to be very careful um to really only do the things that only we can do um and so the kind of the pico system type thing hasn't really didn't really make the right make the cut with us but it's, the, it's exactly the kind of thing we need to our partners to do on that subject, are there any official Raspberry Pi Pico or RP2040 accessories that we can anticipate? Oh, um, no, I think we will. Um, I mean, you see how parsimonious we are actually with accessories for the main product. Uh, we really are very reluctant to, to do um, to do accessories for, them for, 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 for Big Pi unless they're, you know, like a camera or a display where we have some Kind of differentiating advantage uh some, something that really only we can do well um the uh, i don't think we have any accessories planned um there probably will be an official h product at some point so obviously a lot of people are offering um pico with headers you can solder yourself uh, or with pre-soldered headers um, this was kind of the situation with zero for quite a while that there were, there were people doing uh, aftermarket um uh aftermarket um, mods um for uh for for, for um uh for zero w and then we then introduced this product that we call zero wh which has pre-soldered headers and um, we'll do something like that with pico i think there are some opportunities to do some kind of fun stuff there um but that's about all we have planned what do you think i know you had mentioned when it launched that the one feature everybody really wants is wireless which we have seen a couple of uh really right now i think it's arduino and you have seed studio coming out with something and of course there's third party boards is that something you foresee adding as a first party feature um i think it's something we're, we're aware of the ask um i think that there's it's actually quite hard to do in a cost effective way um you know when you're making a four dollar product if it costs you another four dollars to 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 add um uh, to, to add wi-fi to say onto the product then that's that's not quite so compelling so finding a way to do it without significant uh price increase cost increase price increase um is 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 challenging yeah we'd love to do it I'm, i i suspect we will try and find it we will find a way to do it at some point um but it's kind of early days right now you know we have a six hundred thousand unit pico backlog so we've shipped between six and seven hundred thousand picos uh we have orders for another 568 or i think it's 568 thousand um uh, as of this morning um uh picos so we're still not caught up with the non uh, wireless version of the product or the non header version of the product um so some of these some of these things will take even the header even the header thing which is nominally a simple thing um will, will, will take quite a while to uh, uh to filter through so at, oh somebody asks uh chris asks how about a collaboration rp2040 and risk v yeah it's interesting isn't it um i think we i mean obviously we're aware we, we can, we're an arm shop right i mean let's let's face it you know raspberry pi is an arm shop um we uh, you know the cores that we can get from arm are, are very compelling in lots of ways um they are perform very performance so the big cores we can get the big a class a70x class cores that we can get from um from, from arm are very performant um they're pretty energy efficient um they participate yeah and then down the low end cortex m0 plus it's kind of hard to imagine building any um, a 32-bit processor that's significantly smaller. I mean, I think the M0 Plus is kind of on the order of the size of the, in terms of gate count, is on the, the order of the size of the original ARM that they made on some vast process back in the mid-1980s. So these are really very, um, uh, it, it's kind of hard to find space where the, and all of these are available relatively cost-effectively. I mean, the ARM ecosystem is not an expensive place to go and get cores from. Um, and so it's kind of a little bit hard to articulate a place where risk five would 
would bring and all of them participate in the ARM ecosystem. They all participate in the ARM software ecosystem, right? So say the Linux products, there's an enormous depth of investment. It's not as big as the depth of investment in, in X86, actually, but there's an enormous depth of investment in software optimization for the ARM platform. Um, and so so yeah, that's that's really attractive and compelling. It's good for it's good for us, it's good for our customers. Um, you've got to kind of identify something that risk five brings to the party from our point of view or the point of view of our customers. I'd love to do a risk five product because I think it is it's an interesting architecture. It's the kind of it's the end sort of maybe the maybe the end the end state of evolution of that kind of mixed line of uh, of Berkeley uh, of Berkeley uh, of all Berkeley ISIS. Uh, and it's it is well designed. It'd be good to do something. But right now there isn't a chip. There isn't an obvious core that we put into a chip of our own. There isn't an obvious that our chip. Um, so we're not there yet. I never say never because it is it is interesting and it would and one thing would be really really good fun would be to have RP twenty forty but with a risk five core because um, then you'd have a very you'd have this kind of apples to apples world where people really could look at the advantages of and they would be instruction set advantages and life would be cost structure advantages they'd be instruction set advantages of the ARM world and the risk five world against each other that would be kind of fun um, the cost of doing that would be over a million dollars. Um, to, 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 if all you did was take the MTO clusters out, um, put um, a, risk, a risk five core, if there was one available, into the, put a pair of risk five cores into the chip, um, that would be over a million dollars just in uh, take back cost and uh, a post sale, immediate post sale, which would be, it would be a, a, a brave, it would be a brave decision how you have a, an exciting, it would be courageous. You know, we had, I don't know, those of you in Britain. We've come across Yes Minister, the television series Yes Minister, where they talk about um, uh, Sir Humphrey is talking. Sir Humphrey, who is a civil servant, who is talking to his. Have you, you guys in America, do you know what Yes Minister is? Yeah. 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 I haven't watched it much, but I know. Yeah, it. Sir Humphrey, Nigel Hawthorne, is talking to his minister and saying, Well, Minister, you know, um, uh, you know, that would be a brave. You know, that was, he, the hacker says he's going to do something, and Sir Humphrey says that would be brave. And they, they decode it as, you know, brave means that it will cost you votes, and courageous means it will cost you the election. Um, so it would be somewhere between brave and courageous, I think, <laughs> to spend money simply for the purposes of, of, of giving people the opportunity to run a low-end risk five pair off against them doing uh, The review suite asks, will customers ever be able to buy eight gigabyte uh, compute module fours? Uh, yes. Um, yeah, should we talk about compute module four a little bit? Um, so, so, so well, this year, really, Pico and RP2040 uh, that came off the back of a really packed few months, right? So we had um, CM4 in October of last year, and we had Pi 400 in November. Um, we um, uh, um, compute module products for us generally are slow burn. They're slow burn products, right? Because you sell onesies, twosies, they get designed into things, and then people come back a year or two later and they want 10,000 at a time, right? Um, CM4 is weird, right? It's really easy to design with. Um, they, I mean, it is really easy. To, it's really easy to design with. Um, a couple of things have happened. One, power architecture is very straightforward. Power architecture with historical compute modules, you had to provide external power sequencing. You had to generate a bunch of different rails, and you had to generate them in the right way. Um, CM4, you put five volts in that makes its own power rails. Um, so that's nice. Um, also, it has Wi-Fi on, so you know, well, half the SKUs have Wi-Fi on. Um, so it's been very easy to design with. I saw a wonderful um, uh, board on Twitter. I mean, you guys may have seen this. Someone made a uh, single layer copper. They routed copper, or rather than making a rather than printing a PCB, they took a sheet of copper uh, of copper clad substrate and used a router to route um, a, a circuit onto it. And they were able to make a working CM4 based board just with a single layer of copper. So it's, it's very very easy. Um, what that means is that it's ramped faster. Than demand has ramped faster than any compute module we've ever seen. Uh, we're selling about between twenty and forty thousand, depending on the month. We're selling between twenty and forty thousand a month, which is nuts for a product which is nine months old, uh, for a compute module product which is nine months old, um, and that's what's going on with availability. Um, so not all the SKUs. The, the intention was never really to make all of the SKUs available over the counter. You know, zero lead because kind of what's Raspberry Pi's a big part of Raspberry Pi's value proposition is that when there's not a global semiconductor shortage on, um, the products are available over the counter in quite large numbers. So we're making 20, 30,000 
20, between 20 and 30,000 raspberry pies a day. Um, they're in stock and you can buy large numbers of very easily. Um, there are 32 SKUs of the compute module for, um, because you've got, um, you have four ground entities, four slash entities, and Wi-Fi and no Wi-Fi, so that's four times four times two. Um, the intention was never to really have them all be over the counter available. So what we did was we defined a subset of them that we would make available, like 10 ish, 10 and 15, um, which would make available over the counter. And then the other ones were going to be available either in larger volumes or at longer lead times. And then what we do is we'd see which ones were popular and we'd move those into the set of the over the counter ones. And that was, you know, that sounded like a great plan at the time uh, because we thought we had a year or two to make it happen. And then what happened was that we launched it and just exploded. Uh, and we're still shuffling volumes. And the answer, yeah, short question, long answer. Yes, they will be available. Yes, they should be available. Um, I don't know, tweet me or something. I mean, I'll DM me, my DMs are open. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm always happy to talk to people about challenges they're experiencing, getting their hands on my products. Um, I'm kind of surprised if no APP SKUs were available in, in, in one off. So it may just be that SKU were looking for it. On the 11. subject of uh, future Pi iterations, I wanted to touch on SSDs. Do you know whether or not there are plans in the future to integrate more SSD support in future Raspberry Pi models? Uh, so do you mean, do you mean M2 sockets and M2 sockets and NVMe or SATA? Or in any capacity. In, in any capacity. Um, but it's just sort of, sort of slightly trollish of me to ask the question, right? Because the answer's, uh, the, the, the answer's probably the same to all of them. Um, we like USB 3 as a way of talking to SSDs. Um, so, uh, so that's the, that's the sort of the short answer. Um, would it be nice to see a, I'd love to see an internal SSD on a Pi 400 type product. That would be very, I mean, people, a lot of people would be Pi 400, but they hang an SSD off the back. Uh, I'd love to see an internal SSD in a, a Pi 400. Right now, there isn't a, there isn't really an obvious way to make that work, given the port choices we've gone for. So we've got, um, uh, we've got four, um, we have a four port USB hub and we bring three to the back and three to the back and the, the board of one internally to, to talk to the keyboard controller. Um, so there isn't an obvious way to put a USB device in, say, inside the device. We don't have a spare PCI Express channel on the current generation of silicon. We have a single X1 um, and we have a, a single X1 um, PCI Express, which we use for USB. Um, so there's not an obvious way to stick NVMe on there. Uh, we don't have... Um, we don't have M5, we don't have MIPI M5, so we can't stick a UHS. You can get soldered down UHS uh, SSD-like things, you know, sort of super fast EMMC. Um, so there's kind of lots of different technologies you could use um, to do it, and none of them really fit the country. So it's something we're aware of, future ones, really. I mean, I, well, I wish I had one more PCI Express channel. And the answer, it's one of the ones that there's lots of these things where the answer is, how many do you wish you had one more than you have? Um, so, you know, how many PLLs do you have for generating clocks on the chip? One more than that, always. Um, and I suspect that's the way the PCI Express channel is. But yeah, I think probably a future, you know, once we, we're still in very much in the Pi 4 generation. Once we start to think about chipsets for future products, I would think that more PCI Express lanes and or, and or interfaces um, is probably a lot of Speaking of your, your plans, what do you feel like needs needs improvement if you were focusing on improvements to the current platform? What what features would you would you want to add or what things do you feel are lacking? Because I feel like right now it's in a really good place it's in a really good place in terms of perform performance for what you get, interfaces, networking, uh, all the major stuff. Um I mean more of everything, right? So um you know, it would be nice. What would it be nice to have? Uh, more processing power, more memory, um, more well, more ability to address more memory, right? So we're kind of with the eight gig product, we are at the limit in terms of memory addressing capability. Um, uh, so the ability to address more memory, obviously more processing power. Um, you know, so higher clock speeds, higher RPC cores. Um, but yeah, these are all kind of handle turning things, right? None of these things are, are revolutionary. ASB three dot one. Um, um, uh, two by two MIMO Wi-Fi, um, uh, um, 
two and a half gigabits and you know they're all like you know for everything we have you can increment um but i'm not sure any of them that make that so so this is why i say you know we're still very much in the raspberry pi 4 generation we're still not really thinking that way we think you're still in the mode where we're thinking about if you look where we're making our investments, making our investments in making Raspberry Pi 4 better. Why is that important? Because we don't have a Raspberry Pi 5 at the moment, um, but also because, um, I mean, remember this all the way through Raspberry Pi, we invest in the existing devices. So there are 40 million Raspberry Pis in the world. Um, we invest in software because that benefits the people who already invested in our platform. If we invest in hardware, we're actually investing in the people who haven't invested in our platform. You know, we're investing or yeah, maybe they have invested and we want them to invest again. So I think it's always really important to have a focus on software. So, you know, what are we looking at at the moment? Uh, Vulcan 1.1. Um, so we've got Vulcan 1.0 support. We want Vulcan 1.1 support. The hardware will do 1.1, 1.2. So, you know, that's that's work that's going on. Um, uh, desktop performance optimization. Uh, there's a Debian... Um, uh, Debian 11, bullseye, because it's coming up. So you've got Debian, a, a new Debian is is in the process of freezing at the moment. So there'll need to be a new operating system based on that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, things like that. Um, uh, what was another one? Um, yeah, I spent a, bit, a little bit of time, a little bit of time looking at IPv6 DHC, um, P, PXE network boots using IPv6 things like that, which turn out to be quite important for people who are putting Raspberry Pis in data centers. Um, so there's a lot of these a lot of these things, but what they all have in common is they're all upgrades to the existing platform. It's been a long time since we actually added anything new. Right? I mean, Raspberry Pi 3 was the first time, was the last time back in 2016 that we added a new feature to the platform like that. Um, and, and a lot of it is about turning up, turning things up. <laughs> Uh, so James asks, are there any plans for a new Raspberry Pi DSi touchscreen? Uh, we'd like to do something high resolution. Um, obviously, we can't do, um, we couldn't do full HD with the two lanes, the two gigabit MIPI lanes that are on the connector. Uh, but we would like to do something you could do better than um, 800, 480. Um, something we scheduled to start thinking about this year, um, but this year special, right? because you can't buy anything. Um, so, um, yeah, we'd love to do it. I mean, you know, it's, that's a, that product's been around for a long time. It's incredibly popular. Um, it, it's a, sort of a um, 20,000 unit a month product. Um, a lot of industrial use because it's very, very robust. Um, uh, but, yeah, we'd love to do it. But it's it's been around for a long time. It's probably our, probably the product that's gone longest without a refresh. Um, it's, it's, I, I don't even, I can't even remember when we launched it. Les, can you remember when we launched it? 2015? I don't know. I think it, it was it, before then. I think it was about it was Pi 2 era, so looking about 2014, 2015. 2014, maybe. 2015, yeah. So so it's uh, it's probably the, 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 the longest lived um, uh, sort of prime uh, Raspberry Pi product. Um, maybe next year we could start looking at something. As I say, right now, it's incredibly challenging to keep that product, product, the, the original product in manufacture. Um, LCD glass is very hard to get your hands on. So, so we're kind of focused. There's a little bit of a, there is a little bit of a sense this year that we are, we are sticking to the knitting a little bit. You know, we are trying to avoid launching new things so we can focus on keeping the things we have in stock. Poe Hat Plus is an interesting. Oh, hello, Russell. Um, Poe Hat Plus is a uh, is is an interesting one, of course, because that's a product that we launched because of supply constraints. Ah, hello, thank you for your custom. Um, yeah, this is a product that we launched because of supply constraints. So we were supply constrained on Poe Hat. We had Poe Plus Hat in the wings, and we weren't going to launch it, and then we realised we just couldn't make enough Poe. Because again, another product was going to be very popular. We are still making Poe Hats. We haven't POL'd it, but what we've done is we've launched Poe Plus in order to steer some demand onto that product in order to conserve the, the POE hats. That we have. So Russell asked, do you think you'll ever majorly break backward compatibility with the form factor of any of the product lines? For example, a bigger PCB, the connectors move back around the whole of the board. Um, we do play with the form factor, of course. You know, the Pi 4 broke the form factor. 
Uh, Pi 3 broke with form factor as well. Actually, remember the uh, the LEDs moved between Pi 2 and Pi 3 because on Pi 2 we put LEDs in the only bit of board real estate which was suitable for a Wi-Fi antenna, so we had to move them um, uh, to, to to be able to add Wi-Fi. Um, so we are we're always ch making small changes. I think that shape though of the Raspberry Pi has become quite iconic with the boat tail, you know, with connectors on two edges. Uh, and the and the boat tail kind of, of of big tall connectors on the right hand side. It's quite iconic. We've got a lot invested in it. Other people have got a lot invested in it. Um, the obvious other form factor is all the connectors on one edge. Um, uh, what's been really interesting, I think this may have contributed to the popularity of CM4, is that that's effectively the the layout that we've gone with for the CM4 I/O board. Um, and I think what we actually have, and there's a little bit. Um, Probably selling about a about for every four CMs, we sell one CMIO, um, and I think what you're seeing there is people using um, CM4 plus um, uh, the IO board as an alternative form factor Raspberry Pi four, um, and uh, and so that's that's been quite nice, and that was intentional. That was when uh, Dominic uh, designed that product. That was in his mind. You know, it, has, it also has the wide voltage input, has the barrel jack and the wide voltage input, which has been a persistent ask from a subset. Um, of our customer base, um, and plus the ability to put a full-size PCI Express card in, and, and other other kind of fun things. So that's that's one. Um, uh, you, I'm a little bit surprised that I've not seen more people sh um, uh, hulling um, um, uh, Pi 400s, because um, the Pi 400 is another iteration of that. Is another iteration of that um, design ethos and all the things on one end. And it, it's really nice to have well, I don't think we'll. I think the SBC. Uh, I don't think we need more space. Um, I don't think we have more connected, particularly because we went for micro HDMI. We've gone for full size HDMI, but I, I don't think we need real estate, either the board real estate or the periphery real estate, um, as long as we're prepared to tolerate connectors on two edges. Speaking, uh, speaking of uh, form factors, this one always comes up. Uh, Steve wants to know about any news about the future of the Pi Zero form factor. Yeah, I, that's one that, I mean, to recap, the issue with the Pi Zero form factor is that it's very dependent on the POP, um, on the 2835 POP memory layout. So there's not space on the board for a, um, uh, for a subsequent um, Broadcom chip and a RAM chip. Certainly not if you want to put them both on the top side of the board and the kind of one sidedness of zero is kind of a kind of a thing for us. Um, so we need new silicon, really. Um, it's not what the silicon team are working on, <laughs> if that's what anyone's wondering. Um, you know, so so um, you would need you need new silicon in some way. Um, yeah, it'd be nice. I think there's a, I think there is a sweet spot a little bit more a little bit faster than the, than the zero. Um, even if it came with a lot more cost, I think there is a, there is a sweet spot, um, and we'd love to find a way to explore it. Maybe you know, kind of dual core, same sort of clock speed. Maybe even lower clock speed if you had a more modern core with better IPC. Um, dual core, uh, maybe um, would, would open up. On the other hand, if you look at what people use zero for. The, the performance of a zero is fine, actually, for, for, for the majority of things that people use. If we want more performance, we have the A, the a series products. So we have the, the 3A plus in particular um, gives you a kind of a cut down, particularly lower Z height. Um, so smaller X, same Y, smaller Z. Um, uh, so that's your kind of, you know, the 3A plus has elements of kind of super zero. It has elements of super zero to it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. And of course, you, it, has the, it has the dual band Wi-Fi as well. Do you think there will? Do you think you'll update the A series at some point? Um, I think it's something we might have looked at this year if we were throwing all the chips we could get into making Bs. Um, uh, you know, I think I think it's something we look at. I, we never really resolved what the what the pitch was though for it. Right? Um, is that it is quite hard to it's quite hard to get it to twenty five dollars. If you can't get it to twenty five dollars, so it was, there's not much point in a thirty dollar product, right? Um, so you've really got to open up ten dollars. Yeah, A products don't sell well, right? I mean, A products are are never big volume runners. You know, they they sell hundreds of thousands of units, not millions of units. Um, 
Uh, and so unless you open up a at least a $10 price gap, I don't think they'll sell very well at all. Um, there will always be people who like the form factor. So there will always be people. Like you do get people who take a B, desolder the connectors off it in order to flatten it down. People will like, particularly people who want lower Z, um, will 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 buy those. Um, but that's a really minority. That's yeah, you know, that's a minority sport. If you sold a, if you sold an A at the same price as a B, but just appeal to it being smaller, you might sell ten thousand units like that. And so so we never really resolved what a 4A would look like, uh, what what you'd throw out um, in particular. You kind of have to throw out USB 3, right? Because you really can't afford the USB. You know, if you want to try and get the cost down, you can't really afford the USB 3, the PCI Express to USB 3 bridge. So you're kind of back to USB 2. That's not a bad thing. Um, uh, it does mean that you have a spare PCI Express lane. So there was sort of a, do we do a, does it look like a, does the thing look like a 3A plus, but it has, or a, or a 1A plus, but it has a PCI Express, some sort of PCI Express connector on it. That would be fun. But, you know, those, so those were, you know, lots of ideas got kicked around. Do you, do, you, do you just stick with two, do you stick with two HDMIs or do you try and save a little money by putting one full size HDMI connector on there? Um, uh, so these things, the, these ideas got kicked around. But this year, literally every single chip we have is being used to build either Pi 4s, Pi 400s, CM4. It would be irresponsible to, to, to rob that. Uh, Stephen asks, has the chip shortage affected the Pi market? Um, surprisingly little so far because the team have worked very, very hard. Um, so there's always, yeah, you know, we were lucky we went into the year with a, in a reasonable component position, reasonable finished goods position, reasonable component position. Um, we were quick to realize that it, the things were going sideways. Um, so we were able to kind of entrench out, you know, sort of, um, sort of, sort of, um, uh, get on top of the supply chain quite quickly. Um, but halfway through the year, um, most products are still in a pretty good supply position. I think CM3 is in a shallow supply position. Um, two gig Pi 4 is in a shallow supply position for the volume, for volume customers, but not actually for single, for, for small unit customers via approved resellers. Um, uh, it, it gets more. It gets more. Cha it gets more challenging. Um, uh, we definitely will leave the year with a backlog. We actually we enter the year with a backlog. You know, we en we seem to leave and enter every year with about a half million in a backlog. And we'll probably we enter this year with half a million in a backlog. We'll probably leave this year with more than half a million in a backlog, which isn't ideal. Um, but we are still. Remember, I said part of our value proposition is availability. Uh, working very very hard to, uh, to 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 make that happen. CM4 is the really challenging one. We have chap Dave Lee at, uh, at, at um, Raspberry Pi. He runs kind of the CM4, the interface to CM4 customers for us. Uh, we joke that he's photocopying CM4s. Uh, he must be photocopying CM4s because he's able to stretch. <laughs> yeah, we have quite a lot. You know, I got I went to the factory two weeks ago. And, uh, shot some footage of, of pies whizzing down lines and stuff. They're making loads and loads and loads of raspberry pies, um, but they're going out the door very fast. Um, and so, what you see us doing, particularly industrial customers, is getting to know them much better. Is working hard to get to know them so we understand what they need. You know, we'll always try and help people with what that's what I say, my dear Andrew. We'll always try and help people with what they need if we can. Um, uh, but that's it's a two way street, right? We need to know people. So we understand that they are not hoarding. Because the temptation in this situation, that's what's causing the problem, right? The whole global problem is caused by hoarding. It's like a petrol crisis. Right? Um, so it's caused by hoarding. We don't want people hoarding. Also, we don't want people selling to brokers. The temptation is to get some people to make events them onto brokers. Um, so, you know, we are we're very, we're working very carefully to know our customers. And of course, we're very lucky that we have this awesome collection of approved resellers. Um, and we've, have been with us for a long time, many of them through several cycles, many of them through several cycles of this. Um, and so, so they know that, we're, that we do our best. How, how are sales this year compared to last year? Because last year you said 
it was an epic year because people were coming into going into the pandemic has the lifting of uh, pandemic restrictions had an impact on sales oh uh, yeah they've gone up again you put restrictions on sales go up you take them off they go up again you know? um it's 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 um yeah they've gone up we've had an incredible first half um of the year um i think we are at um I did seven million units last year i think we've done seven getting on for seven and a half i have new cats by the way i have new, I have new cats. oh awesome sadly, Congrats, me, sadly 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 raffles sadly raffles the cat died last week um but i have uh, i have two i have two new kittens who have joined us a little bit before and they are adorable and very very black um, <laughs> i think it's good luck. um so um yeah we, we sold seven million last year uh, we sold 7.4 now in the last 12 months so if you sort of kind of skew the year around by by um uh, six months we, 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 so we're, we're running ahead of we're running ahead of last year's uh, the first six months of this year have, have been larger than the first six months of last year by three hundred thousand dollars which is wow. but it does it does then create does then create I, I think actually if we'd seen the same demand as last year we'd be fine last year was a record year uh, and if we'd seen the same demand as last year we would have no supply chain problems um so so our sort of um, where we have challenges they're being brought on us probably by more by extra demand than by insufficient supply what the supply situation is preventing us from doing is preventing us from flexing um to to fix um shortages caused by demand makes sense i think we have time for one more question and steve steven asks uh what's your thoughts on pi 4 400s being used with windows with windows uh, yeah. in the business end of the spectrum um, I, I'm I'm really excited about about Raspberry Pi 400 in business. Actually, um, I think if you're if you're even without Windows, um, there are a lot of VDI solutions, Citrix um, type solutions uh, that you can use to um, bring a desktop, a Windows desktop, onto a Raspberry Pi, even if it's, even if it's running Linux. I think if you're kitting out a call center today for a bank. You should buy Raspberry Pi 400s, right? They're better thin clients than anything else you can buy. Yeah, Citrix has done an amazing job getting their, their, their client software running on the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's a better thin client than you than Hewlett Packard will sell you for $400. Um, and it costs $70, and, it has the, and it's inside the keyboard. And you know, it's so cheap that if you break it, if you're, you know, they, we talk to people, they, there's a model, there's a really cool model actually, which is where, um, uh, you, you cut down on, um, you don't just pay less money for the Raspberry Pi as a thin client, you also can cut down on um, IT services because you don't have to call someone out to your desk. What you do is you just have a, have a vending machine or a, just a shelf at the end of the office that has more Pi 400s on. If your Pi 400 doesn't work, you put it in the bin. Uh, you drop it in a bin and then you go and get another one and plug it in and start using it again. Um, and then at the end of the day, IT services come through, empty the bin, find the 90% of them that probably were working anyway, uh, return those to the shelf, take the 10%, and then if they're in warranty, return them to warranty, or if they're not in warranty, then you waste them. Um, and that's really nice. You know, that's, the, that's an example of how um, low cost has a compounding effect. Where it doesn't just mean you spend less money on uh, on the the, the, the infrastructure, on it, less capex. It also opens up the ability to save operational costs because the thing is that it's kind of disposable. Yeah, that that is an amazing use case. Of that well, people want, people want a black and grey one. <laughs> people people break my heart. I mean, they do. They break my heart. You know, they want a black and grey one. They want a black and grey one. Why don't you want a white and pink one? White and pink is the color that computers are now. Like, what were you living in the 1990s? Um, it's like that's the color of computers. So I don't understand why why people why people want a beige one next. You know, I mean, it'll be all the way back. You know, <laughs> it'll be micro colored. You know, or or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, people want to be. People are forever. I had somebody tweet me the other day saying, "Why do you do this?" You know, I do not want to have to buy it because, of course, what you can do is you can get a um, you can buy a keyboard. You can buy a you can do the upper by uh, you lose the power but the power button isn't properly labeled but you can just take the upper from the raspberry pi keyboard and put it on there and you can take the base and you can either spray the pink base or you can just dremel the back out of a out of a, a, a pi keyboard and then drop the motherboard in and it all works um so uh, i'm not sure if that's true actually that last bit may not be true 
I think you might need to spray paint your pink face. But anyway, you can build yourself uh, you can build yourself one of these things. But there was somebody cursing me out because I was making him go and buy another twenty-two dollar keyboard, um, uh, a seventeen dollar keyboard. Um, for us. But twenty-two dollars yeah. including the mouse. Yeah, <laughs> I think lose track of what a lot of stuff costs. Well, it's a very, very powerful and expensive solution for, for business or anyone. Uh, I want to thank uh, everyone for listening and watching. I want to especially thank uh, Evan for joining us again for our one year anniversary of doing this show. So thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and sharing your knowledge with us and keeping us uh, really busy all year long with all the fantastic <laughs> pie news that uh, that drives our lives. Mm. Well thank, well, thank you for having me. Well, congratulations on a year of um, uh, congratulations on a year of PyCast, and again, congratulations, Ash, on, on the name change. That's that's awesome. That's awesome news. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's great. Well, we will uh, we do this show at seven thirty p.m. British time, two thirty p.m. U.S. Eastern time every week. So uh, we will see everybody next week. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.